morning, good morning, and welcome to a course on healing and deliverance. It belongs to you. I am Minister Coral LeBlue with Light of the World Tabernacle International. We are in the midst of our holy convocation, which began on Sunday, July 12th, and runs all the way through Sunday, July 19th. This is an annual event put on by Light of the World Christian Tabernacle International and our Holy Convocation Fellowship. We have uh, a fellowship of churches and ministries throughout the world, primarily in Africa and Jamaica and uh, London and in the United States. We have morning services, morning workshops, which begin with our morning glory sessions where we go into prayer. And we have various teachers and leaders um, that give uh, messages from, uh, from morning that begin at eight o'clock in the morning and runs to about prayer. Tonight we have a bishop lead. I will talk to you and deliverance, how it belongs to you through the atonement of Jesus Christ. And before I get started with the message, let me um, start prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do give you the honor and the glory for all that you are doing through this holy convocation. I thank you for every person that is attending the convocation in person. We have a big, large church here with lots of seating where people can come in, even during the pandemic, where they're masks, sanitize their hands, and sit apart from each other, even six feet or more. And so, um, and then we have people who are tuned in this morning who are living in via the WebEx, which is similar to Zoom. Many people are familiar with Zoom, with Zoom, but uh, WebEx is very similar. So we have people logging in even right now to hear the various classes that are going on. I thank God for the people who are listening to social media, who are listening by YouTube, people who are listening. So um, I thank God for the message of healing and deliverance and how it belongs to us. So I'm just going to share with you today a bunch of scripture and a bunch of um, uh, um, insights concerning how healing and deliverance uh, belongs to us, the believer. The Bible is still promises from God for healing. Healing is God's will. Believers are encouraged to meditate on the word of God and hold the word of God in their hearts. This is more than just saying empty words when we meditate upon the word of God. But God's word has power. When you confess and truly believe God's promises for healing, you are speaking his very promises into existence. Isaiah 55, 11 tells us, so shall my word be that goeth forth out. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, out of thy mouth, but though, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. But then thou shalt make thy way. Then thou good sets. That's Joshua 1 and 18. I'm going to pause for a minute. I have some students in the class and I'd like to um, give each one of them a handout so that um, the handouts don't necessarily follow every scripture in every point, but it's going to leave them with something to take with them that they can use to access and, and we'll talk about the handout at the end of the course. May I I'm gonna continue? Divine healing, divine healing belongs to the believer. Divine healing is an integral part of the gospel. Deliverance from sickness is pro provided for in the atonement and is a benefit of, available to every believer. God created man in his image from the beginning and after his likeness. 
word says God created man in our, our likeness. When God says our, he's talking about the Trinity. He's talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God created man just like the Father, just like the Son, just like the Holy Ghost. You know, God is an eternal God. God is a spirit. And God is forever. He was from the beginning, and he shall be forevermore. The word says that he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So God is eternal. In him is life eternal. So when God created man, he, he created us too to have eternal life. Man, man's life shall never die. It shall live eternal. And um, we were created to eternally serve and worship God. In fact, we are to worship him only. We only to her have God as our God and no other God shall we serve. But that's a whole nother message. But I just wanted to uh, let us know from the beginning that God created us to have eternal life. He created us in, uh, in his image. Um, he made us whole. There was no sickness or disease. Saw us when he created us. And God gave us dominion over all that he created. But man gave up his authority, build the fall of man, and that's how sin and sickness entered into the world. When Adam and Eve were created, God during the creation, those first seven days, he created the sun, he created the stars, he created the moon, he created the earth, he created every living thing. He created the plants, he created animals, and he from the dust of the ground, he formed the very first man and called him Adam. And God breathed into Adam the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. God then put Adam to sleep because he realized that Adam needed a helpmate. And so God created from for Adam, from his rib, a woman, a woman to be his wife. God created the man, and he created his heifer, the woman, to be his wife. In the Garden of Eden, in the Garden of Eden, God told them that they would have dominion and authority over everything in the garden, and they had access to everything in the garden. The garden was a beautiful place, more beautiful than we can ever imagine or even describe. But God put all of those things, food to eat, um, animals to eat, company in it. They were, the animals were even subject to Adam and Eve uh, who had them, and everything that God did was good. Now God will walk through the garden in the evening time, and he will talk with Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve had access to commune with God, uh, um, you know, in, in the spirit. They had um they had access to God talk with him to commune with him. So, but God gave them all these beautiful things they lacked for nothing, wanted for nothing. And God just told Adam and Eve one thing. He said, of all these things in the garden thou can enjoy and thou can freely enjoy. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he told them to not touch of that tree and not taste of that tree. But you know, here comes Satan. Here comes Satan. And um, we'll get back to that. Basically, God created them in his image. He made them his likeness. He gave them dominion over every living thing and over everything. He made them whole and eternal and healthy and pure, just like him. Later, God had to send Jesus to recover back out that we lost. And I'll talk about that. But God gives us dominion through Jesus Christ where we were able to reclaim what Adam and Eve lost in the garden and um, have dominion again and authority again. Now, the fall that Adam and Eve caused upon all of mankind, God had, again, I said God had given them all worries from Satan. And Satan speaks to Eve. He beguiled her and he enticed her to eat of that fruit. He made Eve believe through the through her mind that what God had said was not truthful. 
he made Eve believe that God was holding back on she and Adam. And God did just didn't want them to have as much knowledge and authority. And, and he didn't want their eyes to be open. Like he didn't want, uh, he wanted to hide them more things to them. So Eve ate the fruit and she took the fruit, she, her husband took it and he ate also. At that point, Adam and Eve's eyes were opened. It was open to all the young all that God had created and prepared for them. Their eyes open to sin. And so their eyes open to um, everything beyond the beauty that God had established for them. And they were made ashamed. They realized that they were naked. So God comes into the garden and he asks them what they had they done. Because they uh, disobeyed God, they re they rebelled against God. God forbade them to be in the Garden of Eden, uh, Eden anymore. And he said, from this day forward, you will sorrow. A uh, woman will birth. The man will have to chill and work the ground with the sweat of his brow. And that uh, we will endure whatever and deal with whatever um, the fall opened the door to, and the fall opened the door to sin and awareness of sin and all the things that come. But the when they fell, the fall created the need for salvation. The fall created the need for salvation because man gave up his dominion to Satan. God still wanted because he loves us so much. He made a way. For us to have fellowship back with him uh, without hindrance, without sin. We do that by, uh, we have that right through the atonement of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when Adam and Eve fell, the fall was a complete fall. Because when man sinned in the Garden of Eden and fell, the whole man reaped the consequences the complete consequences of the fall. He, re he reaped the consequences through spirit, soul, and body. In his spirit, he was separated from God and he became sinful and depraved. His, in his soul, frustration and struggle entered into his daily labor and man was filled with guilt that he didn't have before. And his body became subject to sickness and death. You know, many times when, we, when people get sick, many people think that they're sick because of sin. But the, because the person sinned, but that's not necessarily true at all times. Yes, some people do get sick because of sin, because like the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But we are subject to sickness and we are subject uh, to trials just because the fall made it that type of um, spirit in the air. Satan is um, the god of the, of, of the air. And so he produces the, his sickness and his death and disease and like such. But thank God that salvation is also complete. Jesus, when he died on the cross, he paid the price for our complete salvation. Spiritually, we can find it with God. We can be made holy in Christ. Our soul Emotions can be controlled by the spirit. We can be forgiven. We can have joy and we can through salvation. And our body, we have the right to healing for our bodies because Jesus Christ paid to a price for us through the atonement. Through the atonement. In the Old Testament, the sacrifice of an animal would clear away people's sins for one year, one whole year, so they could live under the forgiveness favor, help, and protection of God for the next 12 months. Basically, what happened in the Old Testament is that a priest would go before um, 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 God each annually in behalf of the people. And that priest would have to make the sacrifice through the blood of a lamb or the blood of an animal. And he would have to offer that sacrifice unto God to forgive the people and to heal them and to protect them for the next 12 months. It was done all through the Old Testament until such time that Christ came to the scene 
and he died for us and he uh, um, suffering and he took beatings and he was nailed uh, to that tree and he uh, hung and he bled and he died, but he rose again. After he made this ultimate sacrifice for us, he rose again for the healing of our body as completely as he paid for the forgiveness of our sins. So no more did we have to offer blood sacrifices annually to receive healing and to receive uh, salvation. Jesus purchased it all at one time during the atonement. He made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Now, what is the atonement? As used in the scripture, to atone is to suffer the penalty for sins, thereby removing the effect of sin from the repentant sinner and allowing him or her to be reconciled to God. Only Jesus Christ was capable of carrying out the atonement for mankind. How Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Um, the Amplified Bible, Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. But in fact, born out griefs, and he has carried out sorrows and pains. Yet we ignorantly assume that he was stricken struck down by God and degraded and humiliated by God. We assume, people assume that God had forsaken him, but Jesus was wounded for our transgressions and he was crushed for our wickedness, our sins, our injustices and our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our pain fell on him and by his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. Home made provision for our salvation our deliverance and healing. The scriptures that back this up says um, in 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. And in James 5 and 1, the word says that the prayer of, this, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up and we or any have committed sins that they'll be forgiven us. And then the word also tells us to bless the Lord, O oh, our soul, with all that is within us, to bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh, our soul, and forget not all his benefits, the benefits through the home, the benefits that forgives all of our iniquities and healeth all the diseases. So when we wake up each and every day, we can give God praise and thanks, knowing that there are benefits that are available to us that Christ made available through his atonement. We divine healing is part of his atonement. And what is divine healing? Who knows what divine healing is? Divine healing. Mm -hmm. Yes. The prayer. That's what. Anything else? Which one? Okay. Divine, that's good. Divine healing is the act of God through the person of Jesus and the prayers of the saints. Like you said, we go into hospitals and we pray for people. We go, uh, we pray for people in our private time. We lay hands on the sick in the church. Uh, we go and visit people and pray for them. And, um, and, and, and that's a way that divine healing comes through, as someone said in the class. Divine healing is the act of God through the person of Jesus and the prayers of the saints where a person is healed physically and are delivered from emotional, mental, and spiritual infliction. Most often it is seen as a physical healing of sickness, such as cancer, diseases, deformities, etc. But healing is not just restricted to the physical. We'll talk about that. Although healing shouldn't be elevated above forgiveness of sins, neither should it be diminished below it. Jesus did healing for us at the same time as he for forgiveness of our, sin, of our sins. So the atonement provided for forgiveness of sins and healing. Healing is an essential part of what Christ came to do. Jesus died for the physical healing of our bodies, just the same as he does died for our forgiveness of sins. The Lord purchased healing for us just as he purchased forgiveness. It's all part of his atonement. Atonement. Uh -huh. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed the people. God the Father used miracles to show people that Jesus had power on earth to forgive sins and to heal the sick. Jesus performed many miracles of healing while on earth. 
Many were not even recorded in the Bible. Jesus, provided, Jesus performed so many miracles and did so many healings that they were not all even recorded in the Bible. It was just too many to write, really. Many were not even recorded in the Bible. According to John 21, 20, it says, so many other things which should be written. Everyone, I suppose, that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So God is God is big. God does big things. God does wonderful things. He does uh, uh, more than we can imagine of things. So when Satan comes to your mind, just like he did Eve, and try to tell you God won't heal you, God won't forgive you, God won't deliver you, God won't open doors for you, God won't work things out for you, God won't work a miracle for you, he won't cover and protect and shield you, the devil is a lie. Do so against the enemy when he comes and the word of God shall send the enemy fleeing from your body, from your mind, from your health, from your finances, from your children, from your relationships, from your uh, soundness, from your peace. We should, um, we should be doing these works that Jesus did. The word says in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So when Jesus uh, uh, atoned for our sins and atoned for our healing, he did it at one time for us on the cross, but his work still continues. It didn't end there. It continues still to this day and until the Lord comes. Our healing is provided through Jehovah Rapha or Yahweh Rapha. He's also referred to. Uh, and Jehovah Rapha means <laughs> the Lord who heals in Hebrew. Jehovah Rapha is one of the many different names of God. There are many different names of God based on whatever we need God to do. He is that. The word says, I am whatever you need me to be. I am your salvation. I am your healer. I am your forgiver. I am your merciful God. I am your protection. I am your way maker. I am your light in the darkness. I am. I am your peace. I am your joy. I am your forgiveness. I am whatever you need. But we are talking about healing today and we're talking about the need for healing. So Jehovah Rapha is our healer. Jehovah Rapha appears in Exodus 15, 26. Jesus became Jehovah Rapha in the flesh. It is through the name of Jesus that we receive what we ask of God. Now Luke 1, 37 tells us, for without God, nothing will be impossible. Okay, and Luke 18, 27 says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Now unto him, who is able to do it slightly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That's Ephesians 3.20. He let us know that in him, he can do all things, all things. There's nothing impossible to him. Now, the father has the power to heal the whole person. As I mentioned earlier, healing is just not concerned with physical healing. It's concerned with spiritual healing. It addresses uh, physical healing. It addresses emotional healing. It addresses mental healing. Now, the Father has the power to heal the whole person. He heals us spiritually. When we talk about the Father healing us spiritually, we're talking about wounds, betrayals, feelings of rejection, sin, loss, uh, loss abuse, oppression, brokenheartedness, Tainted Christianity, such as being raised in a cult or cult or in a Christian home that is full of hypocrisy or judgment or legalism or fleshly addictions or diseases of sin. That is spiritual, where spiritual healing is needed. The Bible says uh, in Psalm 103, 2 through 3, verses 2 through 3, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all this. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases. So God heals all these things spiritually, spiritual diseases. He's even married to the backslider. He heals the backslider. Jeremiah 3 22 says, Return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Hallelujah. 
And then Father has the power to heal physically. We talked about spiritually. Spiritually. Now, physically, we're talking about infections, diseases, body wounds, injuries, suffering. And uh, Isaiah 38, verse 15 through 16 says, What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. It shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. Oh, Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things of the life of my spirit. So would thou recover me and make me to live. Thou will recover my body and make me to live. To can live, to live. And the Lord said, Psalm 107, verses 19 through 20. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Matthew 9, 22 says, but Jesus turned him and saw her. He said, daughter, be of good cheer, be of good comfort, had made thee whole. It is through faith that we receive our healing, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And okay, so then um, the father has a power to heal us emotionally now when we talk about emotional need for healing emotional hurt emotional pain emotional sickness we're talking about things uh, uh what we have feelings of betrayal or sadness or anxiety or absence of parental love addictions unproductive obsessions unwanted compulsions we're talking about the emotions repetitive self-sabotaging behaviors Physical ailments, boredom, various angry, bleak, or agitated moods, sorrow, emotional horror of rape. God heals our emotions too. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are broken heart, and he saveth such be a contrite spirit. Psalms 147 and 3 says that he healeth the broken in heart, and he binds up their wounds. Praise the Lord. Another way that God heals, I mentioned four things. I said physical, I said spiritual, I said emotional, and now mental. Mentally, um, we're talking about depression. We're talking about mental distress. Uh, mind and heart type illnesses, unforgiveness can cause uh, depression. It can cause uh, mental distress. It can cause the lack of peace or clarity or uh, the ability to, um, to make decisions, things like that. But the word of God says, again, that um, Hebrews 4, verses 15, 16, seeing, them the, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passing to the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. And then Isaiah 53, 4 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, we used this scripture earlier, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our aggressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. And the uh, chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now to get healed, we can use the authority that God has given back to us. As I said earlier, Satan had taken that authority when Eve and Adam, Adam and Eve, gave up their dominion uh, by rejecting and rebelling against God. But again, Jesus came onto the scene and he died and rose again for us that we can have healing and we can have deliverance. Now, Jesus, the name of Jesus is highly exalted and is above everything. And we've said before how nothing is impossible to God. Nothing is impossible. Healing is not impossible to God. The devil's agenda is to kill, steal, and to destroy. The word uh, in John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus has come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. But there is good news for us, for us. The word of God declares that Jesus is master and he is Lord. He is master over every demonic power and unclean spirit. In Philippians 2, verses 9 through 11, he tells us that God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow in heaven and on earth and in the spirit world. 
John 14 verses 13 through 14 tells us that whatsoever we should in his name, in the name of Jesus, that the father will do, that he will do, that the father may be glorified in the son. If we shall ask anything concerning healing, if we shall ask anything concerning our deliverance, God will do it for us. The word tells us that if we put on the whole armor of God, that we may to put on the whole armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that we may be able to rip stay in. And uh, in the evil day, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, that and take the shield of faith, take the shield of faith, for we'll be able to quench all the fiery dark one. Him for the salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and that we should pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto uh, with all perseverance and supplication for even everyone else, uh, who, all the other saints. Now, do you have a need to be healed? Or do you know anyone who needs to be healed? Now here are five ways to release supernatural healing God because healing is our task is to pray. Number one, we should pray. We pray and trust in the power of God to change our circumstances for good. God is our healer. He is Jehovah Rapha and he can heal us above medicine. He can heal us above positive thinking. He can heal us above exercise. He can heal us above proper eating. All those things are good for physical to aid in our healing, but God is our ultimate healer and through prayer and faith through the Lord Jesus, by coming on the name of Jesus and we ask of God, he will do what we ask. We should have, the next, the next thing we need is to have is faith. When we will surrender our life to God, we are following his lead without knowing where he's sending us but we will wait on him and his timing and he will bring our healing. Uh, we, number three, we must surrender ourselves to God. Breakthrough happens when we take the first step against back our life. Breakthrough happens when we say that we are going to trust that God is going to supernaturally do what is impossible. God does the breakthrough but he's waiting for us to take the first step of faith. We have to believe in God's goodness, that God has already willed the breakthrough uh, for our life. Number four, we need to get to know God through the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible says, you know, where Jesus told his disciples in John 16, 7, that it is expedient for you that I go away so that he will send the Holy Spirit because Jesus can't be everywhere at the same time the Holy Spirit can. And so we can get to go know God. Everyone can get to go know God no matter where they are. They don't have to uh, travel to access God. They can access, we can access God wherever he is through the person of the Holy Spirit. Let God do the work. We pray. We have faith. Surrender ourselves to God. We get to know God. The trust to um, and fulfill his promises that we are standing on. Um, the good news today is that deliverance from sickness is provided for in the atonement. Divine is an integral part of the and the healing work Jesus continued after his death and resurrection and healing is still available for us today. God still heals today. I pray that this lesson, I know we covered a whole lot there's so much more still to be covered concerning healing, but God still heals today. The works that he uh, began and uh, the works, the uh, price that he paid for us when he um, atoned for our sins and he atoned for our salvation and uh, those things, and Jesus went to be with the Father, but he said greater works that we do because he's gone to be with his Father. He sent the Holy Spirit to be at work in us, to dwell in us, to live in us. And through the person of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of the Lord, and through the Word of God, which is 
the word of God. The word has life. The word has power. It will accomplish it's that that is sent forth to accomplish that we speak. The word cannot return to God void. And so God is still healing us today. And I pray that this lesson on healing, it belongs to you because of Christ's atonement has encouraged you to believe God for healing in areas that maybe you hadn't even thought of beyond the physical, but also the emotional, the spiritual, and the mental. Oh, I pray that healing will happen for you as you go to God. I pray that healing will happen for others as you pray concerning healing for them. Know this, that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. So you don't have to listen to the voice of Satan when he comes to try to beguile you as he did Eve. And as Eve um, suggested to Adam and enticed Adam to eat of that fruit of the tree. We don't have to eat of the fruit of the tree that uh, uh, of the thoughts that Satan brings to us. We can cast down those thoughts and every imagination and every high thought that, ex that exalts itself or tries to exalt itself against the knowledge, the will, and the promises of God. Whatever we shall speak, whatever we shall ask and pray, according to the will of God, and we know that healing is the will of God, salvation is the will of God, deliverance is the will of God. Oh, we know, oh God, whatever we speak, it should happen. And the word says that these signs shall follow them that believe in the in that believe in his name. Shall we cast out devils? We shall speak with new tongues. We shall take up serpents. And if we drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt us. But we shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So I want to close with Psalm 103, two, two, verses 2 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all his benefits, who forgiveth all our iniquities and who healeth all our, our diseases. Thank you so much for watching and listening concerning healing and deliverance, how it belongs to us through the atonement of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you and may you live a healed and wholesome life. Mm -hmm.